Hey, this is Mike, and you're watching Real Black, and, and today we have the honor and privilege of being with Mr. Gary Owen, no S. Right. Uh, here at Helium Comedy Club in Philadelphia. Thanks, thanks for the tickets last night. I had a great time. Oh, I didn't know I left you tickets. <laughs> Damn it. I'm on door deals. Um, I ain't gonna lie to you. I've never seen this DVD cover. Oh, for real? Oh, well, we have to tell people. Like, a lot of people tune out out of the first two minutes. This is on Hulu. It's called I Agree With Myself, but I've never actually seen the DVD cover. So I don't know who wrote this on the back, but it sounds like I'm really funny. So I appreciate that. <laughs> our, friend, our friends at RLJ Entertainment. Yeah. I think Like a Man came out. That was good. And, uh, you know, I think, I think I Man was good, man. Um... I'm still not sure why they make the poster for that movie. I don't know what the fuck happened with that shit, you know? I remember my, my, my manager called me up when Think Like a Man came out. She goes, Gary, man, I got bad news. I go, what? I was like, uh, she was like, uh, you, you, you didn't make the poster for Think Like a Man. She was damn near in tears, you know? I go, oh, I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm in the movie. I don't give a fuck about a poster. Then I saw the poster. I said, damn, they put every motherfucker on it but me? Shit! I thought they were going to put like two or three characters, not nine motherfuckers on it, but there's ten people in the goddamn movie. How the fuck I get left off that bitch, you know? This is why I didn't make the post. Honestly, I got true. I didn't make the post for Think Like a Man. Screen Gems called my manager, and they said, look, we love Gary, but we, we got one white guy on the poster already. We got Jerry Ferreira. We don't need two white guys on the poster. Plus, we passed Gary's name around Screen Gems, and nobody knows who he is. I said, well, that tells me there ain't no black people working at Screen Gems, because black people know who the fuck I am, you know? Like, <laughs> like I literally... <laughs> I gotta be the only comic in the history of comedy. I gotta cross over to my own race, you know? I'm really looking for the opportunity to speak with you for a number of years. I'm, I appreciate you being here. And for those watching, this will by far be the most watched episode of Real Black TV in history. Takashi 6 9 <laughs> You're tearing up the internets yeah. with all, all this. Uh... Well, what I Fake beef? You're fake beefing? Fake beef. There's no real beef with me. Okay. I don't get mad at, at anything on the internet because it's the internet. You know what I mean? There's nothing you can say to me that could upset me. But a lot, for a lot of people, that's the reality. Like knowing what you had for breakfast is a big part of a lot of people's lives. You know. But I, what I appreciate about you is that you you've managed to really find an identity on the net that that services your quote unquote brand. But at mm -hmm. the same time, you you you. You don't have too many Tyrese moments. You don't, oh, let, it no. you don't let it control you. No, and, and that's the thing. We, instead of trying to get valid, we, everybody, I think everybody wants to be liked. Mm -hmm. So instead of being liked around just your immediate circle, so to speak, mm -hmm. now you want to be liked by strangers that have really no stake in the game. And what I've realized is 90% of the people that are making a lot of comments on, uh, on um, social media, negative ones, they were never gonna come see me. Mm -hmm. So my, my only focus on the internet is to service those people that have said, I came and saw you, right. that was a great show. And if they give me feedback negative, I'll take that into account. But if, you, if you've never paid to see me perform, then I have, I'm not worried about what your opinion is really if it's negative. Well, I mean, what, what I, I, you know, we've been talking to comedians, you know, here at Helium for over a decade, and you're starting to see things change. What's great is that you have a, the gatekeepers no longer there, and a lot of people can sort of open their own door right. and create their own lanes. I see a lot on Vlad. I mean, you have a huge presence in terms of um, getting your personality out. Have you, and you're close to, as we speak, you're close to a million um, subscribers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, is, does that, does it monetary increase as well? Do you see the complexion or the nature of your audience change? Do people really come out to see or, is, or are they just like, what's the nature of this, this whole? It's hard. You know, I don't, I'm not able to look in the audience and be like, um, okay, now this show has 300 black people and 80 white people and 20 <laughs> Spanish people. Right. My audience has always been predominantly black because that's the movies and TVs I've been on have been predominantly black productions. Mm -hmm. Um, I just... I'm happy there's more asses in the seats, period. You saw it on the whole weekend, so that's Yeah, yeah. And, and, and like I said, like social media is one thing, but at the core, I, I think you just, I've just kept peppering people, you know? Like they'll see me on TV here. Right. They'll see me on an interview on YouTube here. Or right. Facebook might do a funny video on Facebook. You just keep peppering. And okay. I'm, I'm more interested in the shares and the comments. When I do something on Facebook, or something, I'm more into how many shares did it get?
because that means more people were showing it to other people. Right, and yeah. then occasionally get a viral thing. Yeah, yeah, every now and then. Yeah, I've had. I, it's it's weird. It's the things you don't think is gonna go viral uh -huh. will go viral. Yesterday, my wife is making a cake for Memorial Day. As she's making it, I see her put her finger right in the icing, put her mouth right out of the container. I said, "Just put your finger in the icing." She said, "Ain't nobody eating this cake but people in this house." And everybody in this house either came out of me or came in me. I said, eat that motherfucking icing. Eat that motherfucking icing. And the things you think is hysterical might get like 100 shares. Right. But that Takashi thing, that clearly... That was a plan. It, it, what happened was I was scheduled, and I did. I went on The Breakfast Club on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Takashi went on Thursday or Friday. Mm-hmm. So I'm watching an interview, and I see how he's really giving it to Charlemagne. But Charlemagne's giving it back, mm -hmm. and it made for great radio and great TV. So I was like, I'm really enjoying this interview. It right. wasn't like I dislike or like Takashi, right. and the same with Charlemagne. I like Charlemagne. I know him, but I don't know Takashi. But I was like, okay, this kid's not stupid. Right. He knows what's going on, and he mm -hmm. knows what he's doing. He's fanning the flames because it's right. drawing more traction to him. So I was like, I called my manager. I said, yo. Um, I get to New York um, Monday night. Is there any way we can find a makeup lady, a professional makeup lady, to come to my hotel room Tuesday morning? Because I was getting picked up at 8. So the makeup lady got to my room about 5.30, 5.15 a.m. Wow. It took her about a little over two hours. Exactly like everything replicas. was exactly like him. And when I walked in, nobody knew I was going to do it. Everybody, th I heard some people making comments like, um, you know, the Breakfast Club was petty for doing that. I go, they didn't do it. I just showed up like him. But you know, you was, they say you were a crip first and then now you're blood. Is there any truth to that? We all bloods. I'm all positive. What are you? <laughs> right? So what are you? What are, you know what blood type you are? I really don't. What, what I are don't you? Think about it. I'm A positive. You A positive. So we ain't in the same gang. So I can't run with you. Because if I get hurt, what's she going to do? O positive is very rare. Right. So I'm O positive. So yeah. I was with the crips when I realized when you get shot, or you get stabbed and blood comes out, Crips can't do nothing for you. Mm. But bloods can help other bloods. If you owe positive, you can help me. But if you owe negative, can't do nothing with you. The nature of social media also is a lot of people, they get addicted to the likes. They gotta, it's like they're constantly, and I think it really affects creativity on, on a certain level. And I'm great, it's great for comedians because as soon as something happens, you can make a, a video right. about it. But at the same time, does it? do you find it being a drain? Like, you know, to see, like, you know, my little limited access is sort of like you, you do one thing, you put everything into it and you think it's good. And then the first comment, if it's not something completely negative, it's, it's love it, give us more. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. geez, you know, it, it comes from a place, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't feel, I'm, I'm going to read the comments, but I take them all with a grain of salt. Okay. Fair I don't, it's, uh, the negative ones are the funny ones to me. Because mm -hmm. I'd be looking at it like, I, I think you're just mad. Or they're just doing it to get a rise. Okay. You know? I, 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 cause I did a video with my wife where me and Michael Blackson did the fake beef yeah. where I had her say the N word for me. Cause Michael dared me. Right. And I heard like people be like this, I, you know, this is, they called her, a, my wife, a bed wench. And right. I was, I didn't even know what a bed wench was. I had to look it up <laughs> and I was like, what, what are these words? And then what I realized was, okay, if you were upset at that video, but mm -hmm. not upset when Chappelle dressed up like a Klan's member, mm -hmm. then you just mad. Because well, it was the same thing, just opposite. But the, but the game has changed. Like, I've, I've talked, Guy Tory was here, and, and he, he was saying, there, there are a lot of people, I don't think anybody's losing money over it, but there are a lot of people that are getting work as stand-ups that have never even been on a stage. And mm -hmm. um, just on the basis of their popularity, they feel, the owners feel they can be a draw or whatever. And I'm, listen, I'm never going to knock somebody that are using whatever tools they can to make money it's on you. So, like, you know, I know a lot of old school comics fought the Internet for a long time. Mm -hmm. They fought Twitter and fought Instagram and fought Facebook. But eventually you got to buy it in because I'm like, dude, that's where we're headed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like I'm not mad at somebody because I, mean, I, I hear some comics saying, you know, well, they're not ready, though. They're not ready to headline. Right. I was like, I would. You never know when you're ready to headline until you start headlining. Well, My first. TV appearance on BET's Comic View. I've been doing stand-up less than a year. 
Then they offered me the hosting job. No, no. When I got my first hour special, I didn't have an hour. Mm. If you, and I don't know where it's at in the annals of time, but BET's got it somewhere. Mm. My jokes were so slow because I was literally looking at the clock at the front of the stage. Like, and white people, I know we're not the most rhythmic folks in the world. I can dig it. But I figured out our best inventions at strobe light. When the strobe light comes on, we can hang with the brothers. Hey, when the strobe light comes on, doesn't everybody look just like this? If I got a laugh, I milked it till there was not one. <laughs> But as soon as it goes off, this turns to this. <laughs> then I get in the next joke. And then my brain is like, okay, I'm almost there. It was such a relief to get done with that hour because I didn't have it. I was, I, I'm a, I was telling jokes I'd never told before. So, what, so when, when, does it, when does it become natural? Like for the people that are watching who are big Gary Owen fans and, or, or just aspire to stand up. I, mean, I, I think in the Buzz, I don't know how you feel about the BuzzFeed article, but I thought it was very in depth in terms of your, your come up. So I don't want to regurgitate mm -hmm. like your whole life experience. But, yeah. but one thing that I'm always curious is about like from knowing that you had a, a an interest or the people liked you on stage of being really good at and comfortable and knowing how to control a room. What are some of the gems that you can drop for audiences in terms of like, just how, how do you build that hour? How do you make sure that the audience stays entertained? Well, I always tell, well, I always tell the guys open up for me. I go, the first thing you gotta have fun. Your job, and I always say my job as a standup is to make sure that people leave in a better mood than when they got there. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all you want to do, leave in a better mood. And with that, it's, it's have fun with them. And if you tell a bad joke, acknowledge it. Not every joke's going to hit. Okay. You're going to tell a bad joke every now and then. That's what comedy clubs are for. Right. But when you tell it and you don't get it, be like, ah, I should have said that earlier or later. And the crowd will go with you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Once they like you, they like you. And how, how do you come up with material or write? Like, I know a lot of people, they... They don't even write. They just come on stage with a list. Yeah. I mean, how do you, before you get to a helium or, you know, be on all-star comedy, how do you develop the material? How do you know it's funny? I don't know. I've never written a joke down. Wow. In my life. It's just, it's all up here. I'm on stage so much. But I've never, like, I have my phone. I might have a word mm. I'll put in my notes. But I've never, like, written out a joke. That's why it was so hard when I did, like, if I do any of the late night talk shows and they want you to send your setup, I mm -hmm. set over ahead of time and I'm like write it out. I go, I don't really know. A lot can happen between now and three weeks. Right. You know, as we see. I mean, yes. this country now, every day, Trump, just when you think mm -hmm. he says something else, you know, mm -hmm. we just had the royal wedding. Cosby just got convicted. There's so much right, right now. There's always fresh. something to talk about and you have your own distinct perspective mm -hmm. on things. Yeah. So let's get into that. Um, because as we speak today, now ho hopefully when you're watching this, quite frankly, I don't think Trump is going to be in there much longer. But I mean, what, oh, what are you feeling? Oh, he's in. I think eight I, years. Oh, I don't know about eight, but I, he's going to finish his term out probably. Because w this is what I know: knowing people that like Trump and knowing people that don't like Trump, <laughs> there's no middle ground. Nobody's saying Trump's a I. It's either you hate him mm -hmm. or you ride for him. Mm -hmm. And I know I got family members that ride for Trump, mm -hmm. and I'm and it's. It's shocking because we have to have a rule in our, and whenever we do family functions now, we can't talk politics because it's just, they're so passionate, you know, about it. I think you're a really political dude. I, um, no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I'm, I'm more of like this. Because ah. <laughs> I see some people get so passionate about politics and I'm like, ah. I'm not, I'm not political. I mean, when we did the Dick Gregory interviews. It oh, up, my God. Can you imagine? It opened up. Well, that's me. So we opened up this whole audience for people that really want not only to be entertained, but to be more in tune yeah. to their consciousness. And well, then, I mean, you got to realize what he's been through. Yes. And the, the era that I grew up in. And if you can get your grandma and your grandpa, please get them. Put them in front of the set and reach up and turn the sound off. So all they can see is just them niggas thanking and looting them towns. And then you reach and pull out your Declaration of Independence and get back behind them and read it as loud as you can. We hold these truths to be self-evidence 
that all men are created equal and endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, that when these rights are destroyed over long periods of time, it is your duty to destroy or abolish that government. When people say Trump's stupid, I'm like, no, no, no. He got the stupid white people to vote for him is what he did. Mm -hmm. They're the dumb ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. He got, because let me tell you something. If you broke and white in this country, that's your fault. Right. I don't give homeless white people money. <laughs> I'm like this. <laughs> you can get a job. Right. <laughs> all this shit was all set up for you to make it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got no excuse to be a grown white man mm -hmm. with no employment. Right. I think the government should say, <laughs> uh, grown white men that aren't disabled, you are not allowed to get unemployment. You're not allowed, because that's your fault. That, that would be my rule. And I'm coming from a dude that's, my stepdad has never had a job. I saw, I literally saw my stepdad try to tell my, one of my brothers, you ain't got work, man, just fill this out. I'm like, really? Mm -hmm. That's where we're at? And that's why I'm ostracized from the family, because I'm like, uh-uh, I'm mm -hmm. not doing that shit. Yeah, ambition. I mean, I, I, I admire, again, I, I admire you because you, you you set a course for yourself, and I, I think, I, I think that's part of the. We're talking a lot right now in 2018. There's clearly a the system isn't working for a lot of people, and there's a lot of disconnect, and as a result, there's a lot of pointing fingers at one another, mm -hmm. blame. But yeah, you you're so, proof positive if you just look at yourself, and a lot of times when I listen to your podcast. You look at situations you, you, where you feel uncomfortable, but then you always bring it back to well, what, what was my part in the equation? Where, where, where do I take ownership of things? And mm -hmm. I, I, I really appreciate that about you. you yeah, because I, I, I know when this airs, mm -hmm. some people are gonna tune off the rest of our conversation when we start talking about Trump. Of course. And I didn't say, I hate him. Mm -hmm. Because I, I really feel like, I always try to give people like a second chance. And I always right. feel like I'm giving Trump like a third, fourth chance. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, would you, I, I literally wanna shake my teeth like, would you not say that? You're a fucking president. <laughs> Don't say that, dude. Well, you, you know, know, I want to be like this. Uh, and then you see, you see a moment where I was like, okay, he can, he can do something good here. And I'm like this, fuck. I'm, I'm like, I know it sounds awful, but I, who's ever our president, I try to root for because I'm, that's I, our guy. I, I'm, I'm, and I hate it. I'm not saying I'm apolitical, but my attitude is. It's like, what can we do about it other than really start talking about things and figuring out where we want? And, and there's, there's two forces at work. There are people that want things to go back to the way they were, and there are people that want things yeah. to move forward. And, and if we're, there's no more land, there's no more land. we got to work this out. Who's but coming next? President? Right, right now, who do you think would have the best chance of running against Trump? And not only winning, but kind of getting some, <laughs> bring us back together a little bit. Well, you know, I think Bernie's making a big play for it, but he's old. Right. Right, but uh, he's not out of the race. He's doing things every day to keep his constituency mm -hmm. together. But I think uh, the biggest problem, you know, from my standpoint, was corporations control everything. So whoever's got the most money is probably going to be the one that gets promoted and advertised and mm -hmm. marketed to the point where, yeah, we can see him. We can imagine that person being president. But... Nobody wants to give up the reins. There's nobody. It's so easy for, I think Obama got him because he didn't really have a track record. Like there was, like there was nothing, there was no dirt on him that they could pull from 20 years ago. And that lets you know how him. clean he was. You exactly. You think they tried? If they're, if they're coming after Trump with this Stormy Daniels shit, I'm like this. Dude, you don't think they was digging? <coughs> they was digging? Either, yeah. either Barack's got some ride or dies. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'm like this. You don't think they so, would dig in on so the So that's, that's who you need, somebody that is almost unimpeachable image-wise mm -hmm. to run things, but actually has a little bit of sense that they're not going to take things completely off the rails. Yeah. But you have it's two forces at work. So I, I just think, you know, I mean, one of Dick Gregory's last shows, he's like, look, God is in control. It's really, it doesn't matter who wins. It's, there's, there are greater forces at work. But yeah. I, I but do think about, that things are being dismantled in a way that it's going to be a, it's going to take a long time to get things but how in, about this? in order where, where it works for human beings. But I also think we, the media f fans these flames, right? Oh, of course. And they make it, they make a lot of people think like, oh, we're about to be at a race war. 
and we're and people are at each other's throats, black and white people a lot. When I always say my day to day life, I don't see that. I say come to my show, and that's a better, that's a better. Um, how can I say it? That's a better um, you know, picture of society. Barometer gauge. Yeah, because yeah, you got you got black people just laughing. Yeah, having I think a good most time. most people don't think about this stuff every day, all day. Yeah, but you, you watch it's the news, surviving. they will make you think that. Hey, I just want to take a second on this Sunday and uh, <clears throat> just say, fuck you, Donald Trump. <laughs> fuck off. All right, everybody have a good day. The thing about Trump is, though, even though his tact is awful, right. uh, the way he treats people is awful. Yeah. You know, he's fanning these flames. Like, I think, I don't think he's a racist. I really don't. With... With, with his history, what I think is he's out of touch with society because mm-hmm. he, you know, he's way up here mm-hmm. as far as financial, and he kind of lives in a bubble, Donald Trump bubble. Mm-hmm. He is the bubble, basically. Mm-hmm. And I think when the racist people came out like, this is our guy, he didn't shut that down. I think whoever was in his ear was like, yo, those are votes. Don't, don't bite the hand that's feeding you, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what happened. He didn't defeat, like I remember John McCain when he was running against Barack. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, I heard this old lady stood up and was like, I heard Barack's Muslim, he's communist and all this other stuff, he's a terrorist. (laughs) Not Mm -hmm. communist, he's a terrorist. And John McCain shut her down. He goes, no, 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 Mm -hmm. he's not any of that. He's an American, he goes, he's a good man. We just have uh, philosophical differences on how we feel the country should be run. (laughs) Trump would have did that. Trump would have been like this, maybe he is. I don't know, because he knew that was a vote. You know what I mean? Because he really, Trump. I'm, it, I'm just going to leave it to the commenters on this. I, I, well, personally, I just, if you say, give him the benefit of the doubt, I'll say he's a narcissist who surrounds himself with the wrong people oh, com- who happen completely. to be completely racist. His people are racist? The people he surrounds himself with, the people who are in his ear are yeah. straight racist. Yeah, you could. I mean, and, and he's got a track record. He's been surrounding himself with those people since 1972. Mm. So I... Well, see, you know more than me. I don't, yeah, I don't want to get into Because here's that. the thing. Uh, and that's what I say. You can't get into politics Yeah, I don't want to get into it. it. Because the reason he's, he's going to make it four years is, as far as the country goes, from what I've been told, business is booming, so to speak. Well, gas Stock market's up. up. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's, well, the there, the there's, powers that be that put them there, want them to stay there, right. don't rock the boat. But I, I, I mentioned all that to say another complete narcissist would be Kanye West, who's got an album about to drop. And he's mm-hmm. created some Twitter fervor. He's also living in a bubble. He's yeah. out of touch. And the, 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 the guy at TMZ, mm-hmm. just a great response. Mm-hmm. He's, yeah, it doesn't affect you, but it affects the common black guy. Right. You know what I mean? I try to be... I try to be even keel. Like I can't stand, I can't stand the way Trump does business. Right. But I'm not gonna say he's an idiot. Right. Because where he's at, I'm like, he knew what he was doing. He knew he was gonna surround himself with those, what you say, racist people, yeah. but they're powerful people. You know what I mean? That make decisions. And I'm yeah. like this. I go, so in that aspect, he got into the White House. Yeah. I mean, at this point, two years in, I don't really think, I think Trump was the better option because it's got people talking, it's got people addressing a lot of the issues that have existed since day one here in this country. Yeah. He's brought real. them all up to the floor. Yeah. So I'm not, you look, you know, I, we have our own, we, anybody, you're, you're entitled to your opinion, but I did. I did no, I'm, I'm, my thing is, I just try to. I don't, I'm not, I don't know enough about politics right. to give an educated response. I, I always yeah. say I fall back to D.L. Hughley. Uh-huh. Whatever I want to say, yeah. D.L. says it, and I was like, that's what I wanted to say, but I'm okay. not smart yeah. enough to say so it. So I'm going to have to throw my Noam Chomsky questions out. M&M's, plain or peanut? Peanut. Not even close. Always peanut. Okay, you're 80s, you 80s person. So Jody Watley or Janet Jackson? Oh, man, that's a tough one. Janet Jackson, okay. Janet Jackson, Miss, but Miss Jody, Nasty. oh, Jody was had some bangers yeah. in the eighties. That's why. It's, all right, or Whitney, you could put Whitney in there too. You no, gonna, I'll still take with Janet. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna stick with Janet. All right, Janet's perennial, but we, I, I love I love them all. Black Cat, come on now. We used to listen to that for football games in high school. I get Black Cat. I didn't even know it was a Janet Jackson song. 
was like, I saw why am I so gate? <laughs> All right, we're going to re revoke your card in a second. You've, you've caught up. You took your GED in blackness. Did you, get your bio, did you get your DNA tested? Are you sure you don't have any? I got a little bit of black. We did it on my reality show. Okay. It's like point something, something one. It's like okay. the Ivory Coast or something. Oh, that's like my Indian blood is like. Yeah. You know, they, I don't know where that came from. All right, but it was Some was great, 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 great grandpa was getting Some, it in. Somebody. And then um, I know you, you're from Ohio. Are you going to be really upset? When LeBron comes to the Sixers to help us get that next ring. Well, he ain't coming to Sixers, man. <laughs> what? He doesn't fit Philly. well. I mean, he fits well anywhere, but he's not coming to Philly. Yeah, here's the thing. You have a superstar. You have Ben Simmons. You're grooming him to be that dude, to be LeBron, basically. Mm -hmm. You don't bring LeBron in now. You're going you're gonna to set Ben back. I'm like this. Dude, you, got, you, you have the but, makings. Because, listen, mm -hmm. Ben Simmons is who you're building the team around. Yes. Because Joe L. Embiid's good, but he's going to be hurt. He just That's just what he's right. built. You know it's coming. He's not going to play 82 games for the next 10 years. Right. Ben Simmons can. He just needs to work on his outside shot. Which is the one thing you want. If that's the, if that's the hold up, it's not the court vision. It's not the it's passing. The but he could it, be – LeBron, he's old as shit now. He could be like the Moses Malone to Charles Barkley. I can see that. Okay. Happening. Okay. He's going west. If he leaves Cleveland, he's headed west. He's not going to stay I, in the east. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a he has, The only thing he hasn't done. Well, yeah, he, he's in Hollywood now, so chances are he's going to go west so he can be closer to his businesses. But, um, so I'm not disagreeing with you, but I know as a Phillies fan, like the window is so small. Like this was the year we all feeling at Villanova and Eagles and then the Sixers kind of tanked it, you know, so. You guys had fool's gold, though, because you, you ended the season so strong, but you didn't play a lot of strong teams. And you, th you thought the Heat was like a strong team. They, uh, they were, uh, I, even when I saw it, I go, yeah. He's just a height. Yeah, but I was like, 20 points, that's not Boston? Good. They're going to be scary. They're scary now. Can yeah. you imagine? Just just think. Can you imagine if Boston goes to the finals and wins it? Against Which Golden State? nobody sees that coming. Because I remember, remember Detroit played the Lakers when the Lakers signed Malone mm -hmm. and Peyton and Kobe and Shaq. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember watching, we going into that, it was Lakers in four. Everybody thought mm -hmm. when the Lakers beat the Spurs, that's it. Right. That's the NBA title. And that's how people think feel with Houston and Golden State. Could you imagine Boston comes in that's like the underdog. Pistons did that year in 2004? Be like, because I knew halfway through game one when I was watching that Lakers Pistons, I go, oh shit, these guys can play with them. Yeah. I knew the first half, I was like, this, they can play with the Lakers. Because like, I was a Carl Malone fan. I wanted him to win, win a ring so bad. Yeah. I loved them in Utah and I loved them. And we went to the Lakers, I go, fine, I can root for the Lakers. Right. And I was like, well, everybody wants, that's, that's how we felt when. The Eagles beat uh, New England this year. Right. So we had that experience, but we just wanted more. We're just greedy. Nobody saw that coming. With Nobody. a backup quarterback. It was, Man. It was history. It was one and of the best you got, I mean, and the crazy part, you outcoached the mad genius. That's what won it for The cheater. But anyway, I mean, but, you know, but as soon as the. Are you bitter? <laughs> yeah, like because Terrell should, have, Terrell should have had a ring, too. Uh, as we speak today, the royal wedding happened. Mm-hmm. And any feelings on that? I'm so. It was, I watched it and I said that, that is a perfect example of instead of being afraid of a different culture, mm -hmm. embrace it. Because they, I mean, the, the, the royal family said, nah, she's, she's half black. Mm -hmm. Embrace that. Tell them bring the choir in. You know what I mean? That, that, was, that was the closest wedding I've seen to coming to America. Like a <laughs> royal wedding. Yeah, you know does what it, I mean. The choir make... came in, and then they let the black preacher speak, and he he, he took him to church, and, I, and it was long as it should be, you know. Okay. <laughs> and I was like this. I was like, that's a perfect example of saying, nah, we we are gonna celebrate who the, who our son's marrying, right? And where she's from and what she's about. Not not trying. Not try to like push. No, no, no. We can't have that. There, that's too loud, or that's yeah. too vocal. Well, it's definitely a symbol of progress. Doesn't make up for Princess and the Frog. What? They did, a, they did a black princess. Disney finally made a black princess, but then she was a frog for half the movie. Oh. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of black children <laughs> lost a role model <laughs> with that experience. But now Sorry. in real life. I, I just saw Black Panther. I'm still. <laughs> so we're like. Okay, we I was mad I didn't get the part. <laughs> oh, you, you tried out for Black Panther? Oh, I lose so many parts. Well, you, you lose. I listened to your podcast, and I think a certain percentage is about roles that you got or you didn't get Hollywood inside stories. I mean, what, 
What's the deal there? Why don't we see more Gary Owen movies or more? Mo Why haven't you made made your own movie? I think you're super talented. Well, no, I, this I did myself. Right, but like stand up. I'm saying, like as an actor, why haven't you pursued that more? Um, no, I, I pursued it. It's just, I, you know, it's it's hard to say. Like I said, this this entertainment business is a big temp job. Mm -hmm. It's up and down. It's a roller coaster. And right now, it's crazy because as far as the movies go, I'm probably a little down from because I did like four huge movies in like three years. Right. And then I've done like some smaller independent movies and just, you know, Meet the Blacks. And now we did Meet right. the Blacks too, which is a, a legit movie, right. but it's not a huge, big budget studio movie. Right. right? Well, Will Pecker put you on, you know, in that ensemble. Yeah. I'm sure he yeah. He went to bat for me for real. A lot. He built, he's built, he's built up more superstar black actors in the last 10 years than anybody, I think. Oh yeah. He's, I mean, he's not the sole reason Kevin Hart's where he's at. Right. But he showed, quote unquote, Hollywood, this guy draws in movies, mm -hmm. you know, because I always think Hollywood's always a little bit behind as far as who's really popping as far as stand ups. Because right. I'll never forget when I saw Kings of Comedy and then I saw an article in Variety and it said newcomer Bernie Mac gets a TV deal. And I went, newcomer. Yeah. Right. The guy just sold out Universal Amphitheater two shows, but he's a newcomer. Right. So that I was like, oh, they're always a little bit behind. Or even Tiffany Haddish. Well, he's I would say like that's, Kevin already a, had his thing. OK, go ahead. Tiffany was single handedly Will Packer. Right. There, more than anything. It wasn't Keanu. It wasn't it wasn't <clears throat> the Carmichael show. It was like, it was it was girls. Trip. I see something in you, your personality. We're going to give you the push. Well, she auditioned. She mm -hmm. said, I mean, she, from what I read, she went in three times. Right. So she kept coming back. So it wasn't like Will said, boom. Right. She had to, she had to earn that right. part. Good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As a stand-up, like you say, make your own movies, um, that, that's harder for me than to do my own stand-up specials. Okay. That's why um, there's really no excuse anymore for stand-ups not to get their material out there. You can put it on YouTube, you can put it on Facebook, or you can do it yourself and sell it. Uh, my last three I did myself mm -hmm. because I didn't want my credits to be Gary Owen from Think Like a Man. Right. I wanted my credits to be from a Showtime special and now Hulu special. Gotcha. I agree with myself. I got my associates, you know. I'm, I just, I'm doing my, Before I even got into entertainment, I saw an interview with uh, um, uh, Mario Van Peebles. He said when he first made some money in this business, he went and bought cameras and film where other guys were buying cars and jewelry. He said, I wanted to do movies to make more movies. I wanted to keep it going. And I went, okay, if, I ever, am I, if I'm ever in a position where I have enough money that I can do that, I'm going to do it if nobody else is trying to do it for me. Because we go and we pitch every year. We go to Comedy Central. We go to HBO. We go to Netflix. And they always they, – I mean, they say no. I don't get mad about it. It is what it is. Hopefully one day they'll say yes. But I have a good relationship with Showtime that I can go do it myself and then go sell it to them. Right. So you know, you know the prices, so you, you can always reinvest in your career. And you, and you work every week. Every weekend, you're out pretty much. Yeah. And I get sick of telling the same jokes. So that's why I, I'll get to a point where I'll call my agent and be like, i got to do a special. we got to find a venue. I say, i got, I got to burn this material. I'm getting sick of doing it. And after about a year and a half, I'm done. I'm like, we got to move on. Because mm -hmm. I did have some great jokes, but they're – you know, they're timely, you know, right. like when, you know, Trump got into office, I got a joke about how he got elected. I got, yeah. it's played now. Okay. It's two years old. Well, uh, two, two more things. So in terms of time base, what's taken over the internet in the last week as we speak has been the barbecue Becky. And I, I know she didn't say anything about her last night, but you had a lot of internet things. The, the meme with the woman holding the cell phone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The one in Oakland, Lake Merritt. Yeah. Yeah. What's Perfect. going on? With, you know, speak for your people. You have to defend. The, white people calling the police on everybody, it seems. Well, see, I think that's the bigger issue that nobody's addressing when they talk about these police shootings and police brutality is you got these people making these phone calls saying, I'm in fear of my life and somebody has a gun and they're, they're doing all this threatening stuff. And these cops come in on 20. You know, you got, you, got, you got Tamir Rice in Cleveland. Who made that phone call that said there's a guy, a grown man with a gun, waving a gun around in a park? And mm -hmm. that cop gets out on 20, and it's a white cop. He's probably already scared of black people. Mm -hmm. And then he comes out there. I'm like, well, who made a phone call? There's another one. There's a white guy that got killed in Arizona, Mesa, mm -hmm. Arizona, in a, um, at a La Quinta Inn. Mm -hmm. Again, the phone call was these people were in a jacuzzi. 
man. And they look up, and this guy had a pellet gun that he sprays on, like, the grass. Uh-huh. And they said they see a guy yeah. shooting and waving a gun around out of his window. Right. Cops come. Again, cops out of control. Okay. The guy clearly is fearing for his life. He's doing everything the cop yeah. tell him to do. And they're still... So he's on his knees. He's got his hands up. And yeah. he's, he's freaking out. The cop's yelling at him. And the cop yeah. keeps saying, if you don't do exactly what I tell you to do, this is going to end badly. You might not make it. He mm-hmm. keeps basically threatening him. Right. The guy's crawling like the cop tells him to on the ground. And they he still reaches him. down because yeah. his shorts were falling to pull up his shorts. Mm-hmm. And they blasted him. And I went, yeah. I, it, was, well, you're, it was disgusting to see it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, I mean? We see it every day. You know, that's, that's, that's a big issue. But I mean, and I, and I, I believe that, that the, the people that want to be cops, there, there's a level of infiltration there where they, they kind of want to have a kill on their record. Here's what I think it is. I think as far as the black-white thing is. Okay. You got white cops, mm-hmm. and they, get, they have no interaction with black people unless black people are at their worst. Mm-hmm. They, don't, they, don't, they don't see black people at Starbucks. They don't see black people at a, at a basketball game or a football game and talk to them. Right. With, and then you put them in areas that they, they're not familiar with. And they've been watching the news, so they're already scared of this neighborhood they're in. Right. So then they, they have no rapport with the community. Right. And then when they leave, they go home to a white community, and you're like this. I mean, to me, it's a very simple solution. Mm-hmm. One, you have to hire cops, uh, not on all the shifts, but you have to have at least one or two cops on every shift from the neighborhood that knows people. Right. And this should be part of the protocol that when, even though you're off work, you have to go to a couple high school football games. You have to go to a couple high school basketball games. Right. So people see you out of uniform and you get to know people. Hey, look at Officer Norman in Little Rock. Mm-hmm. Perfect example, white cop. Yeah. The black community loves him because he gets out of his car and he plays with the kids. Right. Or, he, or he opens his trunk and he's got yeah. toys or candy or just something little. And then senior citizens love him. Right. So when he does come across somebody that's not acting right, which is going to happen, right. instead of coming up with his gun out yeah. and he doesn't know who they are, he's like, hey, ain't you Gerald's son? You know what I mean? It's there's, just there's some. Well, that's that's a disconnect. You certainly bring things together. Now, this is legit. I don't know the answer to this. Somebody wrote a comment the other day. Um, a lot of you, you're you're married. Actually, it's a big year for you, 2018, because it's like what 20 years in stand up and 15 years of marriage, right? Mm-hmm. So that's those nice round numbers for people. Um, he said, like, you know, we put a lot of documentaries about the past and things on the channel. And one person's comment is like, look, I don't. I'm white. My girlfriend's black. I don't see color. And no, you I do. Said, All right, we'll speak to them. My problem is you see color. Just don't judge people because of it. Mm-hmm. But we see it. That's the dumbest comment. Mm-hmm. And it's also irresponsible to say, I'm going to raise my son or daughter not to see color. Mm-hmm. No, I, I have mixed kids. I have to raise them to see color. Mm-hmm. They have to be aware. But I also know, you know, I, I, I always tell them, I said, I don't care if, if you feel like you got pulled over or cops treating you, don't argue with the cop. I go, let me and your mom argue with the cop. I want you to come home so we can argue about it later, even if you know they're wrong. Just yes, sir, no, sir. And I've made comments about that on social media. And then you got people making comments saying, uh, well, you just, you telling your kids just to be subservient. You know what I mean? I'm like, no, no. I'm just telling them that I want well, them to make it. Thing. We're, I think I'm five years older than you. In, in the past, I mean, and this goes back, this loops all the way back around. In the past, there, there were barriers of entry. And the rule that I was brought up was you really have to be excellent if you're going to go anywhere in life. And now, especially social media, reinforces the idea of celebrity in a way where people, they can get over it just by emulating the result. And people will accept it as being real and truthful, you know. And I think there's not there's nothing you can take away your 20 years of experience doing stand up um, versus somebody who's new to it. But then, in the court of public opinion, everybody's voice is equal. I mean, are are we at a level where you're you can raise your kids and basically say there's no racism? You can you can do anything that you intend to and have success at it. Or how how do you? How do you navigate that lesson within your own family? To, to do what? Hard work pays versus immediate gratification. Well, I mean, I mean t- take my wife, for example. Mm-hmm. She, she's uh, the only, she's a black female. She's got her own business, a travel company. Mm-hmm. But, but I invested in it. You know what I mean? Like, I invested in the company, but my name's not on anything right. because I wanted her 
to be the only minority completely owned black travel company, mm. you know, because she's a black woman that has her own business. Nice. Basically, I'm a silent investor. I exactly. gave it up front, but she runs it. It's her shit. That's mm -hmm. it. Um, I mean, what I just tell my, I don't, I don't listen. We don't harp on race in our house. Mm -hmm. It's not a every day. It's not like you're black and I'm white. You're black and I'm white. You can't get this because you can't get this because you're white. Right. You just at this point, he's like, just work hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if something comes up, it comes up because we got a 27 year old. Okay. He's fine. He's doing great. Right. He's working. Got a lot of friends. Never. He's got. He got pulled over by the cop. A perfect example. He got pulled over by the cops one time, and, you know, he gets out of the car and literally the cop was like, <laughs> in in our neighborhood. Which, why did he get pulled over? He's got dreads. He's a black kid in a nice neighborhood. We're like, ah. Mm. And he gives him the address. He didn't have his driver's license on him. The cop brought him to our house just to make sure he was telling the truth. Yes. And then the cop comes and. I mean, I have a conversation with the cop, and he was like, you know, he goes, I don't know what it is about your son, but I just like him. Mm -hmm. He had a good interaction with the cop that probably pulled him over for no reason. Okay. You know what I mean? But he handled himself in a way that the cop was like, hmm. But that's the thing. Right. Now we know the did, cop. Did he tell the cop? Did he tell your son, I like you? Or did he save it for you? Oh, yeah. No, no. He told him. Okay. All right. Because yeah, that, yeah. that code stuff also kind of bothered No, him. but but the thing about it, it was a, it was a cool moment because... Now we know the cop. Okay. He knows us. And maybe it was a teaching moment for the cop. Oh, it has to be. Maybe his interaction with, with our son, he won't rush to judgment. Next black guy, he pulls over. You know what I mean? That's how I looked at it. Maybe he was like, oh, okay. That's what I'm hoping. I, I'm not, I'm not in. I, so what I, what, I, what I said to the guy is like, look, you, you're in an interracial relationship and you see her as a beautiful woman, you connect with her soul. That's, that's important. And, but then the next part of it is like, I don't know why everybody's all caught up in it. It's like, well, you're not in that skin. Like black people, unfortunately, we have to think about that more frequently, if not all the time. Oh, without question. I don't know that. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, so. That's, and that's, that's, I think, with my stand-up, how it resonates. Mm -hmm. Because I've never acted like I know what the black experience is. I do it from a white guy that experience and if you notice in my act mm -hmm. i don't call women bitches and hoes either mm -hmm. i just don't do it right it's a, it's a level of respect because i feel like i have before my act but i just stopped because if i do that yeah. i feel like you know it's black women could take it some kind of way yeah and I, it's like i'm just trying to all my jokes i come from a place of i'm trying to be very respectful right. of black people in my jokes i don't think i've ever done anything that's been like just, oh, how could yeah. he say that? Even when I talked about the black Twitter in my act, mm -hmm. I just talk about how I don't even really acknowledge that because yeah. they're, everyone I saw on black Twitter that came at me when I did the Monique video, right. it's just angry. There's one thing to be pro-black. I'm all for that. Right. But there's also anti-everything but black. I'm like this. That's the people that I see come at me when mm -hmm. I do anything racial on the internet. I'm like, oh, right. you just don't like anybody or right. anything that isn't black. I'm like this. What's, what's that going to accomplish? What's worse? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just – well, you talk about it on your podcast. I mean, you, and you do – you've suffered the brunt of being pigeonholed and labeled a certain type of comedian because you cater to a predominantly black audience. Right. I and mean, you, you – like, I mean, you have some level of discrimination – I would think. Or I mean, you're talking like about, a, yeah, you're talking about level of discrimination. In terms of how, how people perceive you, even like I think what you're saying, like in the comments, like people, they base their reaction on a persona they got from the movies. They, they may not have been exposed to your whole body of work. You know, well, so. I, I, th I think Will Packer said it best in, in the BuzzFeed article. He mm -hmm. said, what, what, where I'm at is they just don't know what to do with me. Mm -hmm. They're like, how is this white guy that doesn't act like he's quote unquote black, or I should say hip hop, mm -hmm. not black. Because every time people say that you talk black, I go, oh, I, saw, I talk in City Potier. <laughs> <laughs> Thank right. you so much. I talk like okay. Barack Obama. Um, but they don't know what to do with me. Right. Like, he's like, it, what it is, it's, it's like the unknown. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, the white guy is just himself on stage and off stage. Right. But the black people like him, mm -hmm. and they can't figure out why. Instead of just saying, 
like when I when I showcase for Comedy Central, right. and the showcase was great, and I talked to the Comedy Central guy for an hour after the showcase, right. and I literally looked at my mirror like, I think we got it. I think we finally got the special, and. <laughs> His the, the response was, "Look, Gary's funny, and he connects with his audience. We're not sure he's right for our our yeah, audience." Which is the Monique thing. It's like we, what somebody eventually, no matter how hard you work, somebody there's always gonna be somebody there to assess the value of what you stand for. And but you you're saying you have the right to reject it. You can say, Look, "I can refuse that offer. I can just do it myself. I know where my fans mm -hmm. are." And I think that's the value of where we are today in, in terms of the internet. Yeah, and it, you're looking, and it's funny when people talk about it, they're acting like I got this hard, tragic life. Mm. It's a great life, <laughs> you know? I, I do great on the road. Um, financially, I'm fine. Right. I'm just like, this isn't a struggle like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost, it reminds me of when, when Mel Gibson did Passion of the Christ, and they mm. said, God, you put up like $20 million of your own money. He goes, it wasn't my last $20 million. Gotcha. There's a huge difference so you're, between. You're, you're not making these to prove a point. You're making these so your fans have something to consume. Well, and it's you can it's get these jokes out of the way. Yeah. Well, it's it's just it's for me. It's it keeps me relevant. Mm -hmm. it, this isn't about making the money off this. This is making so people see me, so I make more money on the road. Because gotcha. my my how I live my life, how I budget everything, and the things I buy, and how I live, is off stand up money. I always say the, the TV and movie money is just bonus. I'm like, what? You know what I mean? Like, whoa, I didn't expect that residual check to come in the mail. And so that's just extra. Like, so everything I do with this, it all channels back into going on the road and touring. Love that's it. why I do this stuff. So Gary Owen is not just a businessman. He's a business man. Business, yeah. Like, I don't know what that means. Told you. you know I, got, I got a GED. Where can people look out for you? And what's, what's the next move? Uh, everything's Gary Owen comedy. Everything. All my Gary social Owen media. Right there. Gary Owen Comedy. That's everything. And that, my, my website's GaryOwen.com. That's always got my tour schedule mm -hmm. on. So I got, you know, I got the movie coming out October 31st called The House Next Door with Cat Williams and Mike Epps. And then. Like fun. Deion Taylor directing? Deion Taylor. He was you just know your shit. Well, he you was know just on the radio stuff. show. He was just talking. Oh, about yeah. You that. know your stuff. Uh, director of Traffic. Anyway, go ahead. I haven't seen Traffic yet. That was fun. Paula it's Patton. good? Well, it's, it's the best I've seen Paula Patton, yeah. Oh, that's hysterical. Yeah. That's another movie I thought I had. Baggage Claim. I thought I had that one. I went in like four times and I kept getting called back. And I was like this. And then at the last minute they just went, we're going to go a different direction. I went, God damn it. Because I don't live in LA, so I got to fly out. Okay. So my, I, and it's not their fault. This is just, that's the nature of the beast. But I was like, God damn. But they just sent me the offer? So the rejection, 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 rejection. But, you know, it, it's... All the rejections, but once you get that yes, you forget all them no's. You, you, like, you like movie money better? You like the, the catering and all that? Or you just like the idea of working with your friends? I mean, um, like Cat Williams, Mike Epps, that sounds like just fun all day. But. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have any scenes with Cat. All my scenes were with Mike. But uh, I, I, one hand feeds the other. The more movies you're in, the more people see you, the more they come see your stand-up. Okay. So it's all it's – because all, it's funny, man. If I go too long without doing a movie, I'm like, I really miss movies. Mm -hmm. But then if I'm on movie set too long ago, I can't wait to get back on the road. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, you know. See, you love what you do. That's the best thing in the world. And I knew it. I knew it from like sixth grade. I'm going to be a stand-up. I, wow. I didn't take the ACT or ACT. I literally told my teacher, I'm going to be a stand-up. Wow. Okay. And she was like, what? I said, no, no I'm going to be a stand-up. Interesting. Well, I knew you class clown. I read the article, you class clown, and then uh, mm -hmm. you made a, a prophetic videotape saying that you're going to be famous. Oh, something. yeah, I did. And then uh, I ran away from home, and my buddy has to take me to the bus stop. And he goes, what? I go, I'll make it. I got to get to L.A. I'll make it. I'm funny enough. And we had 13 bucks, so I could only get to Louisville. I didn't know Greyhound was that expensive. They don't show that in the movies. So you end up in Louisville telling jokes? No, I didn't, I didn't get on the bus. I just went back to the trailer. I go, I'll just wait. <laughs> but I was trying to run away. I was like this. I'll make it, Derek. I'll make it. I remember telling him, we're driving downtown to say, I'll fucking make it, man. Was it that freaking horrible in, huh? in the trailer parks? I mean, you sound like the awful. office is a gentleman guy. I ain't oh. got nowhere else to go. Oh, yeah. It was, you know, I, my, my stepdad is like, I, I, I call him like, I could see how like a guy, you always wonder how a guy like Hitler could, could command all those people. Mm -hmm. And I, my stepdad, he's, I, he's like Hitler, but he's got four. Wow. He's got followers of four that do whatever he says. And I, I broke away. And now I'm ostracized from the family because of that. Okay. 
You so know what I mean? Fi give final word of advice, either revelation advice or just career advice for, for our fans. And I'll, I'll... Uh, for stand-up, I would just say if you're getting in this business, the best way to keep working, if you're on the road or you're just getting out there, be on time and do your time. That You'll always work. If you show up on time and you just do your time, if your time is 20, do 20. Don't do 25, 30 and be like, I lost track of time. I'd be like this. Because I've, I've worked with guys I thought were really funny. I said, ooh, I really want to work with this guy. And then he went long. And I went, you can go long once or twice. And I, but say you, you went be long. Respect when for you all the try, other people. Yeah to tell me you didn't go long and I'm like dude I got the watch I'm up next there's lights there's I all I can't kinds work of with things, you anymore man. yeah you know what I mean I'll never tell you what jokes to tell be funny as hell I don't care yeah say so he's back here he's just waiting just be on time and we're over I don't want I don't abuse cuz I want to have I want to talk to you again next time you're here but um relationship advice I know you 20 uh, 15 never years. relationships easy well, never let me, let me say 15 years of marriage listen to this man yeah never compare your relationship with anybody else's because you don't know what's going on behind closed doors and i always say my wife's a kiss of death to a relationship as soon as she says i like them i'm like uh oh <laughs> they're done <laughs> everybody i mean it is down the line i'm like dude you are the i told her i said you're a black widow as soon as you're like i like them see that's a good couple Bert! channing tatum gone russell simmons gone i'm like this kenya stops don't ever don't ever say anything Same. about Barack and Michelle. Please. <laughs> I don't want them to break up. <laughs> Just say they're okay. Don't be like, I love the relationship. Because everybody she says that to, er. but that is the key. Never compare your relationship to somebody else's relationship. Because that's what we get caught up. Right. Well, he does this for her. But look how he's holding her hand. Look at this. I'm like, dude, they might have just had a conversation because he got caught. So of course he's going to hold her hand with passion right now. You don't know what that hand holding means. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's all I would say. You don't know what the f*** you doing. <laughs> that hurt. I don't know much, but I know black women. It's a gift. Hey, what's up? I'm Gary Owen. You're watching Real Black.